and and it became then she's um, just a stressed out teacher. She was a stressed out teacher. She was a young teacher, um, but that was when I decided she ain't come back to this shit. Like this is Ronell. And at the time, I was an adjunct, and so I had the flexibility where I was home during the day, and then I could just take our daughter with us. I mean, with me to my classes, and she literally grew up in my the classrooms that I where I taught, and so um, she went back for middle school. She got into a performing arts school, and um, she asked me to homeschool her for high school, and so I homeschooled her for high school. Part of her high school years was during the quarantine, um, and she's now in San Francisco. She goes to the University of San Francisco. Um, brilliant, brilliant young person. Extremely proud of her. Homeschooling was something that worked for our family. It was something where I purposefully took jobs to allow me to do it. Um, I enjoy my daughter. That is important. I like my child. <laughs> and <laughs> I am very, I am excited about who she is as a person, um, the ideas that she has. She's one of my favorite writers. Um, I, I, I like her, I love her. And if she's watching, I love you, baby. Um, high school was very self-directed. And, and when I say that, people don't wanna hear that shit. Because when you hear self-directed, the kids are teaching themselves. Well, self-directed and homeschooling, there's something that we, a word we use called unschooling. And it's this idea that traditional schooling is not necessarily um, what needs to be replicated in your home. So if self-directed can be interest-led, um, is a child teaching themselves? No. But what they're doing is you're identifying what their interests are, what their strengths are, and you're together, like depending on what the age of the child is or where you think they are maturity-wise, they become co-facilitators with you in terms of creating this curriculum that they're going to engage in. And for our daughter, she was very interested in plants. She still is. She's a plant mama. Um, so plant, so taking care of plants became botany, became science. You know, um, we would take her. She interned with farms and you know, took ownership of that aspect of her learning um, where we supported it. She wants, she's into music technology. Her father's a producer, multi-instrumentalist. Um, when she taught herself how to play bass and, and lead guitar, um, they then taught, um, taught music ther uh, therapy. Lord, <laughs> that's a whole subject we didn't do. Music theory. <laughs> and so that, so he's, lead, he's teaching that but it's led by her interest. So that is, so that's what high school looked like. Um, and so she wound up getting um, the, she just did a, a myriad of things. If she is watching, I'll shut up because I don't want to tell all her business because she is, yeah, she, like she don't let me follow her on social media. She's sick of me. She's on the cover of the book. That's from when she was seven. She don't let me take pictures. Sometimes she will because she's sick of me because I am such a groupie. Like I am so, proud of her. I, I think she it. is I just a fantastic human. I love her so much. Yeah. Yeah, and so when people talk about homeschool, I don't think it's for everyone because I really think that if you don't have the ability to really love your kid, you're going to fuck them up more mm -hmm. if you have them home. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I people like talk about it's a privilege to homeschool. I'm a black person that, you know, white supremacy is such that we got schools run by black people, populated by black teachers where white supremacy is rampant. Okay. Hey, you better talk so, that talk. So, so when we talk about privilege, is it a privilege to send your child to school? Is it a privilege to homeschool? Let's really think about the environment in which we're, we're in. When we talk about schooling, schooling is my belief on schooling is that if the child is not being taught on how to give back to their community, how to build their community up, and how to um, be self-sufficient, 
and be able to provide for their immediate family and for the, their family at large, then that is not education, that is indoctrination. And what is often said about homeschooling is that is indoctrination. Um, Religious-wise, there are many people that do homeschool for religious reasons. But if we look proportionately, usually, um, and it, it must look at it racially, for white people, it's usually depending on what their children with ours. Um, but there are a lot of black people that um, homeschool for religious reasons. But when we talk about indoctrination, let's, and, and what comes up a lot with homeschooling also is socialization. This idea of socialization, socialization, socialization. Socialization, when folks are saying it, they are speaking to the ability to engage and to communicate with another person. For those, I know I got some teachers here. I think all of you all are teachers. I know three of you all are. <laughs> it have been in school. When, let's think of a school day. When do the children get this? If they're not early elementary, early elementary where singing is encouraged <laughs> and we want them to read, when are, are they really encouraged to speak? to engage with each other. And so when you're talking about or you're comparing this idea of traditional education to homeschooling and, and socialization is foundational to what your question is, why homeschooling can possibly be detrimental. Our daughter was engaging, I told her she was in my college classrooms, but she was engaging with a, a bevy of people, a variety of people from a very young age. And so now she's able to you know, every person that has met her from when she was um, 10 and up, oh, she speaks so well. Oh, she can hold her own in conversation. Oh, because that's normative and it's not, and the things that she's able to engage in, it's not looked at, oh, you're not ready yet. This is, this is what you learn in 12th grade or this is what you learn in 10th grade. If it's interest led, the child is saying they're ready. And so then you're able to do this and so a lot of things that are really held off and looked at as being professional activity can be part of the normal homeschool and learning environment. And so I say all of that to say, homeschooling is a, a practice that should be unique to your family's needs, to your child's needs, abilities, and interests. It should be something that you are curating, you are the curriculum, um, sitting in front of a computer, buying someone else's computer programming is not homeschooling. I don't give a shit what the hell you say. That is not homeschooling. They are at home on the computer doing traditional um, education. Homeschooling, there are curricula that, um, items that you can use, but ultimately it's not a replication of a traditional um, home, a, a traditional um, school practice. And when I refer to traditional, I'm talking about private, public, and charter schools. And so people have been homeschooling before COVID-19, um, will continue to do so, but COVID-19 was really like the publicist for homeschooling. And so it's really become part of the national conversation now. Well, I was just educated. I don't know about y'all, all right? <laughs>